first thing you need is a PVC T. It's one inch on the two ends, three quarters of an inch coming out the single piece. You'll need two plat PVC plugs that are one inch that are going to go into those ends and you're going to glue those in so this piece is going to actually replace the one on my prototype. Glue it so you'll need that, those three pieces. You'll need PVC glue and PVC primer. You'll need two stainless steel bolts. You can use galvanized but stainless steel is better. These are 1024s by two and a half inches. They come in a pack of five and they were $1.78 at Lowe's. All these came from Lowe's. You can do without these, but I don't. They're external toothed lock washers. Uh, also at Lowe's, they are for the size 10. Stainless steel. All of this is stainless steel. 3 16 by 1 inch flat washers. The elements are going to be trapped between these two, so you're going to need four of these, two for each side. You need two of the bolts, two of the external washers, four flat washers. You're going to need two number 10 split lock washers to go on top of the final flat washer to lock it all together. And two wing nuts. These came 1024s again. These came three to a pack. Each of these packs was $1.78 at Lowe's with the exception of the external tooth lock washers came four to a pack and I'm not sure what the price was on those. In addition, you're going to need a fairly extensive drill index so that you can pick the exactly the right sizes for the drilling that you're going to do in both this and the PVC pipe for the cable later. You probably don't need one this big uh, a normal set that goes up to a half inch should be more than enough and have plenty of selections for you to do the job. You're going to need a drill driver and a drill bit set or a drill uh, driver set so that you can pick the right sizes. Um, you can get away with just a screwdriver but this makes the job easier. It's not a necessary. And any of these things can be adjusted. You can use smaller or bigger PVC pipes different uh, sizes and lengths of the hardware so that, it's, so that it's held securely. So for this first step, gluing them together, I've got a piece of cardboard and a, I've got a board because I'm going to tap these in with a, the, a hammer just to make sure they're in there really well. Open up your primer and prime all the parts. You can immediately move from the primer to the glue. Doesn't take a lot of glue, but you need to put glue on both sides to make sure you get a good seal. There we go. While we're waiting for the glue to dry up a little bit so we don't get it all over our fingers, we can go ahead and select the correct drill bit. These are uh, 16th inch standard size selections. Get your number 10 bolt out and we're going to look for a bolt that will make it a snug fit going in. We don't want it too loose but we don't want it too tight. If it's too tight we can we run the risk of cracking the plastic. This one is too loose. That's file 11 64ths, 5 30 seconds. Seems like the bolt will screw right in. I will bring this back over. The trick here is you want to get the hole directly straight through, and you don't want to drill into your table. And then we're going to see if we can find something to prop this up so that it is level and I'm just going to use the screw to push it through there just like that and that looks pretty level it's not critical I ball it but when you drill the holes make sure you drill straight through that's, right that's all there is to it we 
we're going to decide which side of the PVC we want our elements on. There's a little bump on this side. I could file that down, but because it's there, I'm going to put them elements on this side so the screw will come through from this side. So the first thing I do is put the star washers on. That will help them keep them from backing out. Start this into the plastic by hand if you can. Might help to chamfer it a bit with another bit, a larger bit. We'll see if this works. And it's going in. So don't touch it on the other side. Don't touch it on the other side. It's going to be hot. Same with the other one. Ooh, it is very hot. There you have it. Just going to get it ready. Last put on here to have this piece complete until you get the cable ready is two flat washers on each bolt. One, two, one, two. Two split lock washers. And two wing nuts. Now when you go to put this together, the elements will go sandwiched between the two washers. The ring connector from the feed line will go under the lock washer, split washer, and over the flat washer. And then you'll spin that wing nut down and your antenna connection elements will be complete. You can unloosen the wing nuts take the elements off so that they don't get damaged if you're transporting it. So the next step is to connect this to the CPC, CPVC T that is the center point and the mounting position for the SO239 connector. So to do that we're going to need 18 inches of 3 quarter inch schedule 40 Make sure it's three, schedule 40, that's stronger. The thin stuff will not hold up. It will bend and flex and possibly crack a lot easier than the schedule 40 will. So we're gonna need, obviously, the PVC, the T. We're gonna need something to cut it with. You can do it with a hacksaw, uh, just about any kind of saw, and some glue. We're only going to glue this piece because I'm going to switch this out with my other antenna, my prototype, because I like the sealed. So, 18 inches of PVC pipe. And the reason we want 18 is because we need to stand off from the elements so that we don't have interference from the feed line, because the feed line is going to come back to the center point and then drop down the mast. Eighteen inches. This is going to go into here. This is going to go into here. And you'll have most of the antenna built at this point. Now the feed line comes off the back because there's a dimple here already. So you need to decide whether you want the elements on the same side as the feed point or on the back side. The, we'll access it through this hole. And I'm going to go ahead and glue this up. As soon as that cures, this goes on the other end. We will drill this for the feed line that's coming up. So while we're waiting for that to dry, CB cable is what I bought. You can use bulk, whatever. It's it's RG58. For the prototype I used an 18 foot length and I used all of it. 
this one because the gentleman who helped me test the prototype wants to see if there's a difference with and without that choke coil we aren't going to do a coil we're just simply going to cut it use a short length to connect the elements I've got a little extra there yeah I think I'll wait to cut it until I get the first end done be back in a minute okay the easiest way to do this is to take unless you have a fancy tool just take a razor blade and just roll the RG58 so that you put a tiny little cut and then gently cut through just the outer cable do not nick the inside do that by bending it and pressing the blade down you want to get through all of the shielding but you don't want to cut any of those copper strands because you want the best possible electrical signal getting through and there so there's that that's probably not quite enough we have longer we can always trim it when we get ready to do this do the uh, tips so I'm going to go a little bit further and it may look like I'm making multiple cuts here but I'm making very light until I can just see it opening up and there we go so now we pull this down just push the outer shield braid down so you can get to these loose pieces and just pull them out. Now this foil that's here, that's a second shield and you just cut or tear that off. Don't need that. Now when we go to put these elements on, we want it as short as possible between the elements so I've got more than enough because there's also going to be a ring and so we need to compensate for the ring so these little ring terminals are insulated we're going to take that insulation off the blue piece there it's not difficult just grab it with a pair of pliers I'm using the uh, dikes and just give a little grab and pull it off twisting helps so these two ring terminals are going to go on to the bolts and we're just putting them there for sizing the, the wire here you can take a little bit more off of there You do need to leave a little bit of slack. We want to twist this up, so let's do that before we cut. You want to make sure you don't have any stray fibers you can short out your antenna with. There. We go. there. Now we'll size it. We want that in the center. One thing you want to remember is that you do need a little bit of slack so that you can take this cable off in the future. Okay, and we're going to strip the inner conductor just enough to put that ring terminal on there. Just right. And now we're going to solder. So I'm going to heat up the soldering iron and I'll be back in a minute. 